We have time for questions? Yes, indeed. We have time for a number of questions, so raise your hand. One word I didn't hear from you is the word respect, but you <coughs> seem to describe mutual respect in a lot of what you say. Yeah, fond fondness and admiration is about affection and respect. So admiration is our term for respect. It's as important as love and affection. Hi. Can yeah. you talk about the telltale signs of a uh, relationship that will stay together but be unhappy in the relationship? Uh, relationships that stay together and remain unhappy are very similar to ones that uh, break up. Uh, they're just a little bit less intense. They're, so they're quantitatively different, but not qualitatively different. So people who stay together and are, are unhappy um, eventually lead parallel lives. And they go down this cascade of distance and isolation that we can describe very well. And eventually they're really living in parallel, but they're not very connected and very lonely. I have two questions for you. If you had to name, I know these things all are interactive and they all work together, but if you had to name one thing that's the most important ingredient to a good relationship, what would it be? It would be friendship, communication, et cetera. And then the second question I have is, is your work, in, in your work that you've done, have you looked at the chances of marital or relationship success being greater with two working spouses as opposed to one stay at home and one working spouse? And in addition to that, when children are brought into it, does that change that, the work or your findings? Excuse me, I got a telephone call. <laughs> My daughter. <laughs> well, I, I, those are great questions. Um, <clears throat> if I was going to pick one thing, and I was asked this question by the marketing director of uh, Random House uh, when he was trying to decide whether to put any money in marketing my book. Uh, he said, can you tell me in just uh, 30 seconds what I should do to make my marriage better? And I said, I think the most important thing you can do is to know and honor your wife's dreams. And he got up and left the room. And it turned out he went back home to Brooklyn on the subway. And his wife thought he'd gotten fired. And he said, she said, what are you doing here? And did you get fired? And he said, no, I, I want to know what your dreams are. And uh, this guy Ross told me this later. And he said, her answer was, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> so that would be the one thing I, th I think if I was going to pick one thing is to really ask these open-ended questions that are very, very deep and I think very respectful. Um, and <clears throat> two people working, uh, these kinds of things about um, what, can you, what can you describe about people? Do they have common interests? Can you pick any sort of descriptive demographic variables about a relationship that will allow you predict, to predict the relationship are generally pretty bad because um, it really all depends on how people have the two careers and what what they're really saying to one another. So for example, in, in studies of, 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 you know, of two career families, what turns out to be most important is the perception of fairness. And it's not fairness, it's not being 50-50, it's the perception of fairness. So it gets back to respect, you know, point that you made. If there's a feeling that you're in this together, that really makes a big difference. Now the same thing is true about the effects of a baby on a relationship. Fix of a baby on a relationship, 70% of the time, are deleterious. So the majority of couples having babies in the United States are hurting their relationship. They're having less conversation, less sex, um, more hostility, and the hostility is transferring to the baby and affecting the baby's neurological development, cognitive and emotional development. And yet we can reverse those trends in 10 hours of a workshop that we give at Swedish Medical Center. So once you know what to do, you know, then you can change this transition when a baby comes so that it can actually be an opportunity to get closer and build a stronger family rather than have it tear a family apart. And it's, and it's really all about dealing with conflict well, maintaining friendship and intimacy, and honoring the role of fathers. Because fathers, we now know through hundreds of studies, have an enormous role to play uh, in the development of daughters and sons. And the secret of keeping dads involved with babies is to have low conflict with mom and high intimacy with mom. So it's really something we can, we can really change. And our effects are very large 
in the area of prevention rather than intervening when, we're, when problems have really developed and are severe. Did you find or study whether folks that had masterful relationships, whether their parents, whether they believe their parents also had masterful relationships and vice versa? Yeah, a great question. Uh, generally, there is an effect of parents staying together and being happy. Uh, not just not staying together, if they're miserable, it doesn't really do anything. Just stability. Very small effect. There is an effect that people are more likely to get divorced if their parents have been divorced, but uh, the really big effect is whether their parents have, have been happy with one another and have had their conflicts in private, not in front of the children. Because that raises children's blood pressure. It scares them. And so it is important. Uh, the, the role model that we create for our children in our own relationships. That's one thing we say to couples who are expecting a baby, is the greatest gift you can give your baby is a happy relationship between the two of you. So you're not depriving your baby of anything when you go away for, for a bed and breakfast getaway and really have a romantic evening, an overnight. In fact, you're really helping your baby. This is a follow-on to that one. Uh, it's fine to be, uh, and, and I think important to be, repairing those relationships that need help. But in, in follow-on to that question, it seems like we need to have more investment in training young people into how, how to become good spouses. You're absolutely right. And, you know, we know how to do that. Um, we have the instructional technology <clears throat> to make that happen. And, uh, and it's in the work of a social psychologist who's an award-winning psychologist named Elliot Aronson, who has really uh, done all this work called, it, called the Jigsaw Classroom in training uh, school students in elementary and middle school and high school to be able to work cooperatively with one another. And that emotional intelligence can be built, and we know exactly how to do it. And it <clears throat> Aronson's interventions have been effective on every continent on the planet, and yet hardly any schools are doing it today. So we know how to create this emotional intelligence, how to build the ability of people to really get along with other people, to deal with conflict, to maintain intimacy, but we're not doing it in schools. Instead, we're emphasizing just the rudiments and the basics. What's the role of chemistry in your model? What's the role of chemistry? <clears throat> Well, we don't really know. I mean, you know, uh, I think it's huge. You know, we are animals, and liking the way your partner smells and tastes, and, uh, you know, liking to kiss your partner and hold your partner and be close, I'm sure those are very, very basic things. And we know something about uh, maximizing genetic diversity being much more attractive. And somehow the pheromones of somebody who's genetically different from you turns out to be very alluring. Now, it doesn't necessarily predict a good relationship, because there we're thinking with the small brain rather than big brain. Uh, <laughs> but it does have an important role if you can look for these other indicators as well. The okay, most last question. <laughs> the most important question of all, did Dr. Phil really get a divorce? <laughs> uh, that, I, I read it in the newspaper, so I, you know, I presume it's true, I don't know. It's probably not widely publicized. Because, uh, but you can know everything there is to know about relationships and still not be able to make yours work. <laughs> That's because we always uh, partner with people who are less mature than we are. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Gottman. Your work is inspiring and fits so nicely with our theme of love this year. Thank you for coming and sharing with us ways to strengthen our relationships. Thanks again to